Hello, welcome to Heart's Happiness Podcast. My name is Mabry. I'm a trauma transformation coach and mentor. And this is the place where we help you to heal from your past trauma so you can step into your authentic self, the person that you came here to be, and learn how to create a life that makes your heart happy. And then my wish for you is through that journey that you uncover the reason you're here so that you can then go on to heal the world in your unique way and together we can break cycles of trauma. Hello my loves, welcome back for another episode of Heart's Happiness. I am on a solo podcast roll because as I said, I have so much to share with you as I've been... I guess on a next level of my healing journey and I've been really integrating those lessons. I'm taking lots more time and space in my diary so my busyness has really chilled out so I can really like these ideas and concepts come to me like out of nowhere. (laughs) I'm just like oh this is totally a thing. So today I wanted to talk to you about emotional roller coasters okay and taking radical responsibility for ourselves, our reality and our current lives right now. Okay, this is going to be actionable tips that you can put into your life right now to make a difference. So I'm super excited to get into it. I have lots to share and I'm going to be so honest with you guys about what shit you are doing that is hurting yourself and that is keeping you stuck in your pain. And yeah, I'm just going to get real with you. I'm going to use lots of examples of myself. Um, A little announcement. I have got into my YouTubing. I did mention in the last podcast that I will be sharing podcasts, sorry, not podcasts, YouTube episodes and doing different series. I did decide to do Healing Narcissistic Abuse as the first series. And the first part of that is up. So there will be a link in the episode notes if you want to go watch that. So basically, it's like this, but my face (laughs) and um, not a very glamorous video because I am creating all my content at the moment by myself which I'm loving um but yeah just check it out and subscribe and follow and all of those things and I'm hoping you know I'm committing to a weekly YouTube video on there and most of my podcasts are up there like when my team are sort of in and out over the summer but they will make sure that the podcast goes up onto YouTube as well so you could follow both things on there um that was one of my little announcements and you want to make sure you're on my mailing list because I am going to be doing um, consistent blogging as well because I just have so much to share and if you don't follow me on Instagram go check that out I share stuff on there and I'm trying again to commit to a uh, Instagram live every week as well. And last week I did why your manifestations are not working. So check it out. So lots of free content to support you, but get on the mailing list as well, because then you're like the first to hear hear about things. And, you know, Instagram and all of these platforms I use, they don't push my content out like all of the time. So I just want to make sure that you're getting all of the resources to support you. Okay, so let's talk about the origins of the emotional roller coaster. okay? I want you guys to think back to your childhood, right? So those early years, especially zero to seven, and how safe and secure and stable and loving and calm and maybe even boring (laughs) that childhood was. Um, It was it like that. I feel like if you listen to my podcast, you probably had some stuff going on in your childhood, right? So let me talk about mine because I always use me as an example and a lot of my clients have had the same stuff where childhood was a roller coaster I didn't know which parent I was going to get out of either of them to be honest my dad blew up had this narcissistic abusive side but also had this like father Christmas sweet side I don't know about father Christmas but he had a lovely side my mum could be loving and normal but she could also be you know silent avoidant withdraw her love um like take things out on me so I just never knew which one of those parents I was going to get and from a very young age we create meaning that the reason why our parents are the way that they are is because we are not good enough and if we were good enough then they wouldn't behave like that often because they actually told us that if you studied more then I wouldn't get so angry if you were quieter you, you know I wouldn't be like this because they were emotionally immature they weren't in a regulated nervous system So they were incredibly dysregulated being your parents, which created that emotional instability as you were growing up, okay? So 
you didn't know what you were going to get, you didn't feel safe and secure, you learned all of these um, survival strategies to survive that environment, like being the good girl or getting the good grades or saying yes when you meant no and all of that kind of stuff. And I've done lots of podcasts on what different survival behaviours you may have had and I've gone into them in lots of detail. But like those are the kind of things that would have happened for you as a child, right? And that environment where it's completely you know, unsafe, maybe chaotic, you know, just not getting your needs met. Your body as well, your nervous system is really, even if they weren't saying it, you would have naturally been feeling how they would be feeling because we're all connected in that way. And then we get to adulthood, okay? So you're no longer living in a house with your parents. Generally, most of you listening will not be, but some of you may still be. No shame in that. I live with my mum for like ever. Um, so what I found is that I've noticed this a lot with me and my brother, actually. So when we were in our home, like, you know, with our mum, we didn't notice it as much, but once we left the home environment and we started to, and this may be the case if you've left your home environment or regardless, you will be doing this as well. And what happened was, is that we continued the emotional roller coaster of our childhood in our adulthood by being ourselves. Now, this is the really hard thing to face, okay? Because when you're in it, when you're in that victim consciousness, so when you are in, oh, you know, it's because this person didn't want to date me, it's because my husband is angry, it's because I didn't get married yet, it's because I'm fat, (laughs) because I got a really bad metabolism, or whatever. We give all of these reasons to why we feel the way that we do. But actually, we our brain is like head office for those emotions. And what's happening is in your current reality, you know that podcast I did about changing your perspective. But when you see someone being silent and not getting back to your text message, your mind is coming up with the message and the vision. Oh, this feels like when mum used to ignore you. Oh my God, it's happening again. Oh my God, I feel shame. Oh my God, I feel like I'm not good enough. Oh my God, I feel self-hate. All of that is happening and nobody has said anything to you. So basically you are creating the same emotional roller coaster that you had as a child within yourself. But you are giving your power away by saying other people are doing it to you. Um, And I just want to have the caveat for the people that are actually in extremely abusive situations right now where you are, this is your life because someone is actually doing that to you and you are in a roller coaster with that person because of their emotions. That is something different to what I'm talking about, okay? And that is an abusive situation. It's a toxic situation, which you need to like work on your healing to be able to leave or to change those dynamics and to step away and to work on like healing your inner child and you can just contact me if you're going through that because I've got a program heal your inner child to give you some of those tools to be able to you know leave that environment slowly that is a different thing okay so what I'm talking about today is you are no longer in the abusive environment but you still feel the same as the abusive environment because you are doing it to yourself And your body is showing signs of being in an unsafe environment. Your body is showing that you are in survival. And the way that your body will be doing that is like your sleep might be disrupted. You may have weight gain because your body thinks you're not safe. So it's holding on to your fat. You may have like hormone disruption. Okay. You may have health conditions like MS or uh, autoimmune or any of these kind of things because your body is in a state of survival now this is what's been happening to me okay and this is what really the last couple of years of my healing journey have been really unpacking so I have an incredibly safe environment like I live with my husband who is the calmest person on the planet I think um (laughs) and my life is so calm like there is no drama here okay And I have a wonderful home. I do a job that I love. I love my clients. I love creating content for you guys. I have an absolutely wonderful life. But my brain, for the years that I have set up Heart's Happiness, and it's been four years, has not felt that way. And it's been sending messages to my body 
to create sickness and illness because it thinks that I am in a state of survival. Now, how does that even make sense when I'm with the love of my life and my situation is so different because I am creating the emotional, well, not anymore, I'm changing, but I have been creating the emotional roller coaster that I grew up in, even though my life is different now. And for some of you, you know, it could be in a different way, like as in, you know, there are problems in your life, of course, and there are complications in relationships and people have their issues. And of course, that brings up stuff, okay? And that brings up our emotions, but only based on the meaning that we give it and that we make other people's behavior create a response within our body, okay? So that's what I really begin to notice. And losing my baby was like the start of this where you know, my body just didn't feel safe to have a child. It's not because I'm 42. It's because my body is in a state of survival. It's been, it has been, not so, not anymore. My body has changed. I'm going to say that as my affirmation. But it was in a state of survival. So why would it procreate? It wouldn't because it doesn't feel safe to. And why doesn't it feel safe to? Because of the messages that my brain and even my nervous system, my body, is telling my system. And it's saying you are not safe. And it is creating unsafety and the emotional roller coaster, the deprivation, the, um, you know, that familiar hell, my own behaviors and patterns were creating in my own life. Okay. So I didn't have to overwork. I didn't have to work like a nutcase. I did that because I didn't feel safe, I didn't feel good enough, I felt like that's what I had to do. But really what I was doing was I was creating a dynamic that I had with my dad, where you know he wanted more and more and more and more all the time. I wanted to save people, because that again is a dynamic in my family. So unconsciously, I was creating patterns from my past with my relationship with my parents and other things in my life, just me. Just me as head office, right, in my brain. I'm not doing any of this intentionally. This is all unconscious. This is all behind the scenes. This is all my subconscious and my unconscious mind at play creating this pattern because I can feel peace, love, joy, freedom, safety in any moment if I choose to give that to myself. I can give that to myself. I can look at all the ways that I feel love and peace and safety and freedom and chosen and all of the things I want to feel by external circumstances because that's what we're always looking for. We're looking for something outside of us to give it to ourselves, but we actually can give it to ourselves right now and create that feeling of safety, of abundance, of joy, of love. But the reason why we're struggling with it is because our subconscious mind, our unconscious mind, Our nervous system doesn't think that's normal. It doesn't think it's safe to not struggle. It feels uncomfortable with you chilling the fuck out. It feels uncomfortable with you enjoying your life. It feels uncomfortable with you feeling open and relaxed. So what does it do? It goes, no, 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 you're not safe because you haven't paid this bill. You're not safe because that person is angry with you. You're not safe because, um, you know, this didn't work. Your post isn't good enough on Instagram. So I would constantly be getting all of this information from my brain that, oh, no, 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 you're not safe, my love. You're just not safe. Work harder. Heal more. Go deeper. Do this. Do this. Like this constant relentless abuse that I was doing to myself. And that was because unconsciously, I was recreating again and again and again my past, recreating my childhood over and over and over again. Even sometimes putting pressure on my marriage to maybe even try and push my husband into being the dad that I had, you know, through behaviors like, I don't know, overspending or something. Again, I'm not doing any of this this consciously. And what we have to do, we have to really face ourselves. So if you've got a health condition, that where you're struggling, like diabetes, or, um, you know, I, I get messages from people how their body is showing signs of disease. That is because your body is stuck in a pattern of scarcity, unsafety, survival. 
your brain is contracted. You don't even have access to your full brain because you are constantly sending messages to yourself that you are unsafe. And that could be like, oh, my life isn't good enough. Oh, this person doesn't love me. Oh, I'm behind on this schedule. Oh, I don't do this. And all of that, that creates that emotional instability that you had as a child and you are recreating it again and again and again and again. You are recreating it when you attach meaning to what other people are doing. You don't actually know what they're doing or what they think unless they say it. And even if they say it, they still don't get the permission to rub away your peace, your happiness, your joy, your excitement or anything like that. They don't actually have the power. So what today is about is an invitation to get into the driving seat of your brain and notice all of the things that you are doing that is creating this emotional roller coaster. And there will be so many different parts of you that are doing this. There is the part of you from the past that you know, is still trying to please mom or still trying to please dad or still trying to be that great daughter or it or is trying to fulfill a society program of like what body looks like or anything like that. There's so many things that come into your brain that your brain has picked up over the years of like, this is what you need to be to be safe. This is what you need to be to be happy. This is what we need to do. And then not really feeling into the present moment and seeing in this present moment that everything is fine and that actually we can stop the emotional roller coaster. And we can also stop the behaviors that are hurting ourselves, the way that we think about our relationships, the way that we don't create space for ourselves. Where, you know, when I speak to people, and I used to do this as well because no shame, but when we are like such people pleasers or we're such, we're all about our achievement or the outside validation that we don't slow down and go, you know what, it's enough. You don't need to do that. This is causing you turmoil. This is stressing you out. Let me give you more space. You know, this year, especially because I've been going through like this deep healing, I have given myself so much space. Like I have so many weekends where I do fuck all other than like watch movies with Simon, read my book, sit in my garden, go for walks. Like I do nothing. And I don't like when my friends check in on me and they're like, oh, what have you been up to? I'm like, nah, nothing. I'm just getting to know me. I'm just getting to know my patterns. There is no shame in that. And even if you have children and families and things like that, why not slow it down a notch? You know, why not have it so that you're all at home reading or coloring or like baking or doing things that slow everything down that help the body to feel safe rather than the rushing and the busyness because the rushing and the busyness is like a fuel to the emotional roller coaster and this is one of the hardest realizations that I've had is that I'm it's an emotional addiction I'm addicted to the to the pain because I always had that I always had the pain and then like for a short moment, I would have the pleasure, but most of the time I would have the pain. So my body, my nervous system is constantly choosing that familiar hell of pain because it's just normal. So have the realization, um, no like shame or no guilt. Oh my God, I am recreating my past constantly in my own mind. And that is sending signals to my body that I am unsafe. That is contracting my brain. That is getting me to do these behaviors, that numbing behaviors, whether they're eating or drinking or spending money or like ignoring your feelings or busyness, whatever those numbing feelings are, you're doing that because of that lack of emotional safety. So I have forever <laughs> been um, on this journey with my body because I have you know, been told that it wasn't good enough when I was young. So I constantly was trying to change it, but then I would emotionally eat and my it would come back and it would come back bigger. And for a couple of years, I have been told to eat in a certain way to help my body to heal from the trauma and the inflammation. And it's called the autoimmune protocol diet. And maybe I'll do a podcast on it actually at some point, because it is really helping me and my energy levels and helping my sleep and helping my body to heal because it's not putting stress on my body. And I've known for ages what to do and that I should do it. But I have struggled so much to give up things like sugar, like gluten I'm not supposed to have or certain spices because it would trigger a feeling of deprivation and then I would go back to the thing. So what happened was every time I tried, 
it would be just this emotional roller coaster where I'd be good in quotes for a bit and then I'd fall off and la 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 la. It was a bit like it was like that. And the reason why I can do it now is because I've got off my emotional roller coaster and I am spending so much more time in a neutral place that I can notice when my emotions have got out of whack. So like this weekend I was doing a um, liver cleanse and I had to eat fruit one day and that wasn't the best for my body and my energy system because it felt hungry, it felt deprived and it was too much with what I'd already been doing and it was like, oh, I've done it again. I've gone into like a controlling behavior with food or I'm pushing my body too much when it's not ready and that's why I'm getting the cravings. I felt like having a pizza last night. I felt like um, sabotaging. I felt like eating bad bad not food is not good or bad but eating things that are not on plan because I was I had pushed myself too much and now I've realized that actually you know like last week I I had planned my meals I enjoyed cooking every single day there was no up and down and there was not even the thought that came into my mind that's like let's sabotage this because the, the, my body was being nourished in such a way that was so supportive to it it didn't have to send me those messages And this is the thing, this is the power that we get when we start to, no matter what's going on around us, no matter the chaos or the drama, because that still carries on my life. I still have family members and people in my life that are impacted by trauma. So I, sometimes that comes out onto me and, but I'm able to observe that and not absorb it. I'm able to observe it. I'm able to be detached from it and not create meaning or create a story of I'm not this or I'm not that or it's because of this or I'm not good enough or la 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 and create a, a stress response in my body. What I do instead is I notice in my heart, oh, that that hurt, that twinged. What do I need? Do I Do I need to step away from that relationship for a bit? Do I need to say something? Do I need to just have a conversation with myself? So it's radical responsibility because we are no longer expecting somebody else to save us from our emotions and we are taking radical responsibility for the, you know, the control center in our mind, which is sending all of these messages to the body. I've mentioned this in another podcast, but I've absolutely been loving Joe Dispenza's work because he talks so much about the old self so the old self has been born in in the trauma in this in survival in not feeling safe and how that old self is what carries on creating your future because we let that old self run our life we're not doing it consciously right we're not doing it on purpose there's no shame it's just the way our brains and our bodies work and it's uncomfortable to pick a new way so every single day right now i am acting as if I am the future version of me that I'm creating, the one that is disease-free, the one that is no longer in a survival body, but in a thriving body with an overflow and an abundance of health to procreate. But not just for procreation, but for like my own happiness, for my own wellness. I sleep really well. I have great digestion. (laughs) My hormones are really balanced. So it's all in the overflow, okay? So I'm constantly in the overflow. That's the future me I'm creating. The future me with the overflow expands their business, expands the reach of the people that I'm helping, expands the, the income, expands my financial freedom. So I don't have to work if I don't want to, but I could just sit here and write you all books or do this podcast all the time and be like, I don't have to worry about paying my bills, right? So that is the future me that I'm creating. But the wounded child the past me she still lives inside of me and what I was doing unconsciously was letting her run the show but instead my higher self is online now majority of the time she does get a little bit lost and overpowered by my parts and that part of me is the one that made a really yummy smoothie before I did this call There was a part of me before that would be like, oh, you know what, just quickly record your podcast and just like do all that work. And then like you could eat then and maybe just have a Coke because then you won't get hungry. So there was an old part of me that would just um, ignore my nourishing needs, whether that be food, whether that be a rest, whether that be 
taking time out or any of those things. I would ignore that and be like, just do all the things for other people first and then get to you, right? So I've, to be, that's the past self, but to be the future self, I'm like, no, I'm going to, um, you know, make myself that yummy smoothie and I've got a yummy lunch wait for me when I take a break between recording podcasts. And it's like, so I'm being that future me, but don't worry, I'm just like everybody else because past me is still here, right? And I can feel her going, yeah, but I really think you should worry because you've been working a lot less. And that could mean that your business is failing now. Well, that means your business is failing now. And you, we are not safe and you don't have enough. And what are you doing? You, you can't go to the sauna later and have a rest. You need to work all of the hours because you're not actually safe. So you need to create more. So... Can you see how, and that is very, because she's there, that part of me is there, the overworking part of me that's like, you're not allowed to rest, you're not allowed to take care of yourself, you need to go do this, you need to go do that. But I'm like, you're like, say this with love, but you are telling me this based on the past. But that's not who, that's not what my future looks like. My future looks very different from that. I'm creating a business and a life where I can rest and take space and take care of me and allow enough income to come into my home to get the support that I need, right? So there was something I saw the other day, I think it's a Gabby Greenstein video, and she talks about in order to manifest or in order to change our lives, we cannot focus on that scarcity need have I got enough of this? Have I got enough of this? We cannot focus on the survival to create the abundance, to create the overflow. We're giving our energy and attention to lack. And I've spent a lot of my life doing that. And I see that with my parents as well, where they did have money and they did, they were safe financially, but they never felt safe financially because they were constantly looking at the ways they weren't safe financially, if that makes sense. They were looking at all the ways they weren't safe rather than the ways that they were safe. They weren't bringing their energy and attention to what was, what is and what feels comfortable they kept focusing on what there wasn't so there'd be other things that would multiply and then get like annoying bills or or whatever right so if I was going if I didn't have you know I'm just everybody has abundance in some way okay and if I'm sitting here going I'm the unluckiest person in the world with money right I am I tell myself all of these stories and then I'm showing up in the world as that person and I feel shit so I'm going to eat a shitload of cake and ruin my body and I just feel shit and deprivation and survival everywhere oh my god the news is so bad there's so and it is there's so much awful things going on in the world oh my god this oh my god so that's the radio station that you're playing that's the life that you're creating but if you were you know sitting if you were choosing the frequency of the abundance and choosing to see life through the lens of abundance oh my gosh I, like if I was here, I could not even count the amount of leaves that I can see outside of my garden because I've got so many huge trees here. There is an abundance of nature in my garden. There's abundance of leaves. There's an abundance of birds. There's an abundance of bunnies and butterflies. And there's so much abundance in nature. So you can tune yourself into that frequency and like bring your focus and bring your attention to that because the brain loves to focus, right? So rather than letting the brain focus on the the lack, the survival, and being vigilant on what isn't. Allow your brain to be vigilant to what is and expand more of that, if that makes sense. That will really help with your emotional roller coaster. So look at the stories that you're telling yourself that create the emotional roller coaster. Oh, I'm not loved, or I'm not safe in these relationships, or I, you know, um, you know, my body is failing me, whatever it is. When you have that thought, my body is failing me, you'll see evidence for that. My body is failing me because, oh, you know, I didn't sleep well. Oh, my body's failing me because I, you know, I've got like a tummy ache or I've got weight gain or whatever. But what if you bring your energy and your attention to the ways that your body is supporting you? So the way your body is supporting you is that you're alive, that your heart's beating. My body is supporting me by walking me to the shop. My body is supporting me by giving me eyesight to... Um, you know, look at my phone to be able to turn this podcast on. My body is supporting me with my ears to be able to listen to this. So 
You can always find evidence of the opposite, okay? And that will help you step into the energy of your future self and balance that emotional roller coaster that you have created for yourself unintentionally. So if you are walking around your life right now and go, oh my God, my husband is triggering the F out of me. I don't feel loved. I don't feel supported by him. And that's what you see all of the time. I want you to start looking for the ways that you are loved. Okay, even if it's not from him, from like your children, the way that you love yourself. Like that's the great thing. Oh, I love my, and just show yourself all the ways that you love yourself. Oh, I gave myself a nourishing meal. I took myself for a walk. I let myself listen to this podcast. I allow myself to get supported. Allow yourself to feel the love that you want to feel within yourself and expand that. And what often happens is our relationships change as a result because we are seeing them differently. We are like, oh my God, I still love that person, but that person isn't the best at loving me in a certain way. Like I have a wonderful relationship with my husband, but I swear I could not pay that man to give me a compliment. Like, ever you know it's hilarious like we we have a joke and I often say to him because you know I express my needs and I'm like what do you love about me specifically I say that all the time and that really triggers the fuck out of him to be honest and he finds it very he's very much on that avoidance spectrum in the attachment and he finds it really hard to say or to express So I bring my energy and my focus and my attention on the ways he does show me love. So he may not show me love the way that I I feel like love should be shown to me, but he shows it to me when he like cleans up my mess or if I've cooked a healthy meal or he, um, you know, when he gives me like a cuddle so I can have a good little sleep on him or he um, supports me by like letting me do, not letting me, but supporting me in this journey to like be an entrepreneur. Okay, so he doesn't give me the compliments, but I could get that from someone else. I can give that to myself. I can have loads of friends that say that to me if I really want to fill that up. And I don't feel angry and resentful at him for being that person. I mean, I'll make jokes with him that, you know, you might want to sort that out when we have children. But, you know, I I don't get offended by that. And that is part of the reason why we have such a great relationship, because of that because I don't expect him to fulfill my needs. I learn how to fulfill my own needs. And when he is not giving me something, and at the beginning I would be triggered by those kind of things, I'm not anymore, you know? And that we have a very secure relationship in that way, but I still notice that I can feel insecure in other relationships, like friendships or family, and have spent loads of time overthinking them and looking at all of the ways that these relationships don't show me love or don't um, choose me or you know don't make the effort like especially because I'm recovering from over giving and being the one that was doing all of the giving in every single relationship I've ever had so whether that be with a family member a cousin an auntie an uncle a friend anyone I didn't feel safe to step back and let them give and I'm going to do a podcast on giving and receiving next. But I, I didn't feel safe. And then when I stepped back to take care of myself, and a lot of those relationships are just not the same anymore. But I would overthink that because I'd be like, oh, my God, they don't love me. Or, oh, my God, you know, I, you know, like, what must they think? I'm not doing it. But actually realizing that that is all they have capacity for. Like, this world is insane, right? It overworks people. People have so much um, pressure to be this perfect parent, to, I don't know, dress up kids for World Book Day. It freaks me out every time I see that. So people are under so much pressure to do all the things, to be perfect, to create their success, or whatever that is, that they don't have space and capacity to be their fathers to be there for the the ones they love. And that's not because they don't love you or anything. It's because they're caught up in that 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 level of consciousness that oh I have to do all of these things. They've got super overwhelmed nervous systems. They are like busy as f. They've got their own traumas, their own things. And so the people that I could sit here and go, "Oh my god, they don't love me." They're just busy with their own shit. They're just busy with their own traumas. They're just trying to survive. But I'm feeling that in order to be loved, I need them to do this. And some people just don't have the capacity for that. 
because they're not there on their healing journey. They haven't done the work on themselves to be able to give you that thing. And that's the huge, that's the emotional roller coaster as well. Are you knocking on a door for love where that person is incapable of giving you the love that you desire? Like they are absolutely incapable because of where they're at in their life. It's not because they don't love you. It's not because they don't care. It's because of where they're at and their story. And it's got nothing to do with you. But you're telling yourself a story that, oh my God, they don't love me. They And you know, no shame because I've done it too. And actually when I sit back and go, everybody, they love me. They love me just because they're not ringing me every day or messaging me or whatever. They do love me. But this is all they are capable of. And can you love them like that from afar? But what that also means is I understand that I can't get that emotional need met through those people, but I can go find it elsewhere or elsewhere. So whether that be in a new community, whether that be uh, you know, I'm going to a day retreat on Sunday, you know, making new relationships with people that are on this healing journey that do have that capacity to give, that do have that capacity to, you know, re- you know, to nourish me back that are on the same level as me, like they are that thoughtful or whatever. And that makes me feel good. And if I spe- spend time, energy and focus looking at all of the other ways the love is coming through and that and not focus on the ways that it's not because again that is that scarcity that is that emotional trauma brain looking for the ways that it's not safe so when it's doing that thing and shooting off little like stresses in your body because it's looking for the ways that you are safe or not safe should I say the ways that you are in danger Helping to teach it to look for the ways that you are safe is going to create such a huge shift in you. You know, if you were able to master your own mind and these stories that you're telling yourself, the quality of your life, the quality of your health is going to transform, like seriously transform, because you are not allowing that fire up in your mind to create a whole destruction in your in your path like you have the negative thought it makes you feel guilt and shame then it becomes too much then you've got to numb then you've sabotaged a goal then you're full of guilt and shame then we're in that self-abuse cycle but actually you are going okay what is the things that create the emotional roller coaster what what is what am i emotionally addicted to what is it and for me that's very much relationships it's very much obsessing about relationships. So that's kind of my forte. Um, and that that and that I'm not good enough and that relationships with other things, relationship with my body, relationships with money, relationships with people. Like those are, I would say, uh, one of the three real big things that really get me into a like the roller coaster. And the way that I can speak to myself, the way that I can shame myself, the way as well when I was busy and I was overworking and I was overdoing and I was doing all these things, I had a really dysregulated nervous system. So then the mean voice got really, really loud and really destructive. So slowing down and taking space, we can start to get to know these different parts of us and we get to help soothe them, calm them down, give them what they need so that we don't have that emotional roller coaster, okay? And when you start doing this process, bigger voices will get quieter and then you'll start to notice the subtle ones. Like I've noticed um, where I've got more space that my, I will feel like my inner child is just not wanting to do the work and she's feeling forced and she's feeling controlled. And then I have to really step into, am I controlling her? Am I making her feel that way? And then I'm like, no, because she wants me to stay the way I am. She doesn't want me to to grow. She doesn't want me to like have a family. She she wants, she's quite liking the way I'm changing. So what I've had to do is have a little chat with my inner child. I've had to have a little chat with my inner teen where I'm doing new things to do with business and to get them on board. So we have to get our parts on board as well. And by the way, all of the stuff I'm sharing in this podcast is part of the parts work 
the somatic work and the nervous system work I speak to in my Heal Your Inner Child program. So that is a set of like lessons and homeworks. Like there's like 12 weeks, I get 12 modules there for you to con- like read the content and do all the things I tell you to. And you can do that either on your own through self-study or you can do it with me. So that means you can come to the monthly calls. I'll be running those until February for sure. It may go on for longer than that. I'm just making a few changes to that program. So if you want to come and join that, some people do that program and then they add a couple of one-to-ones on it. You can also do that. So drop me a like a DM on Instagram or you can email me at heartshappiness.co.uk or anything like that and we can go through that program because that has all the good stuff in it. You've got to take space to learn and to do the work. But this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get you in charge of your control center. So no matter what the fuck is going on in the outside world or in your reality, you get to create from that place right now. Like how magical is that, by the way? It's fucking so magical. And what I heard the other day, which like, actually, scrap that. I'll come to that today in a minute. But I have been watching Dark Matter with Simon and it's an Apple TV show, by the way. And I'm loving it because this show is talking about the multiverse and it's talking about a lot like Joe Dispenza's teachings, actually. And he talks about the quantum field and, um, you know, what's reality, what's not. Like, it's really interesting. And when I won't spoil anything for you, but I will tell you this one thing. When they're going into different realities, it's based on their own mind. It's based on their own mind is what they're seeing. So that just shows the power of our reality is based on our own emotional hub. So if we're creating this emotional roller coaster within us, that is what we're gonna see in the world. But if we can do everything we can to calm, to soothe, to create space, to relax that level of scarcity, unsafety and everything in our reality right now before our dreams even hatch, then we get to see something else. And and that's the thing I was going to say to you. Like the way that I've been learning and what I've been relaying to myself, it's almost like you are like that your life is almost like a hologram of what you feel and think. And that when you start to tween tune those energies, so you're no longer in the energy of scarcity, you're no longer in the energy of fear and of lack and of um I'm not safe and survival you are changing the reality. You're changing that hologram because you're choosing to see something else. And honestly, it can feel like you're deluded. Like I do feel like sometimes, am I deluded? Because it's crazy, right? So for example, if I'm choosing the frequency of like really healthy overflow, abundance of health, you know, like an autoimmune system that's all calmed down, my immune system's all calmed down, my soldiers are, you know, uh, on a retreat somewhere relaxing until real danger comes along and I'm you know the cholesterol in my body's gone down you know, all of these markers you know blood sugar la 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 has all changed like it's like if I went to a western doctor and I said I'm doing this and um, they can think I can think I'm crazy I am obviously doing this work with my mind alongside like health changes as well like don't get me wrong I am doing that Lots of people will think you're mad because they're like, what's that going to do to your reality? Well, like it literally changes it because your reality is no longer in alignment with the energy that you're putting out there. Like it's actual science and, you know, definitely check out Joe Dispenza's work. He talks a lot about this and, you know, but even like Einstein and people talked about this, by the way. So this has been out there for a long, long time that we have this power, but we're just not like really using it. pretty stuck in our survival all of the time and how about we just stop guys how about we just stop doing that how can we build a heart's happiness life if we are living in survival and I say this as the creator of heart's happiness who was living in survival I didn't know that because that was just normal to me and I did feel like changing my outside reality was part and it is part of me creating my heart's happiness life But what difference does that make if I'm sitting in my dream, but I'm still feeling like a deprived, abused child because I'm the one now depriving and abusing myself? Does not make sense, does it? And that way, this is what the holistic approach for you to have wholeness 
to have, you know, what you truly need right now, not when you get your thing. And you will. I'm going to do a podcast next week on manifestation and giving, receiving. You can attract your things into your reality for sure. But you're going to, if you do that from a place of flow and abundance and overflow and not from scarcity, it's going to feel so much more easy. It's going to feel so much more comfortable. It's going to feel so much more expansive. It's going to feel so much more nurturing than, oh my God, when is this manifestation going to come into my reality? But And you can have all of that. But I think sometimes in the spiritual world and like even in the self-help world, we could be chasing that outside thing so much that we've actually created this emotional roller coaster machine within ourselves. And that emotional roller coaster is taking away from our happiness, our joy, and our feelings of happiness in this moment. So when we can really support our mind, really support our younger parts, really support our protective parts, really support our nervous system, our body, we're speaking to our body, we're speaking to all of our different parts, it may seem crazy, but then we create that wholeness, that balance, um, and from that place, we get to create a life that is magical if you so want. You know, because also because none of that really matters anymore if you're feeling the feelings that you want to feel right now in your body, not just in in a thought like, oh, I feel rich, like, you know, a feeling of freedom, a financial freedom. What does that feel like? Like, I feel financially free when I record these podcasts because I love creating them. I've gone really over to the time I was going to spend on it, but I love it. I'm in the flow. I'm enjoying it. It's like life for me. I love it. And that makes me feel financially free that this is my job and it makes me feel like, you know, boss lady person. So that feels really, really good to me. It feels really good in my body. I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling joy. And that will ripple out into the world and it will create back what some of the images that I have for my future in time, right? When I first started this podcast, no one used to listen. Now we have a few hundred people a week and that's increasing all of the time. But one day this podcast is, and maybe when you're listening to this, I'm a bigger deal than I am recording this. There's thousands, there's hundreds of thousands of people listening to it. I'm getting invited to other platforms that are bigger and it's you know expanding my message out there into the world. So that's what comes from us feeling those good vibes and those good energies. And you guys might be able to even notice the energy shift in me from when you've been listening to me all of these years, if you have been listening to me all of the time, and noticing how I sound today when I'm not being abusive to myself, when I'm not being um, like an emotional roller coaster person, like you might be able to see our man feels different. Her energy seems different. And maybe you've even noticed my content because people have reached out to me about some of my podcasts recently. They're like, I loved it so much. And all the new things that I'm coming up with that I want to share because I've given myself for my brain and for my energy to expand and to think about different things in different ways rather than being stuck in that survival response all the time. And that's all a result of me managing that emotional roller coaster and creating balance, right? And Life, by the way, when you go to create, if you want to create a business, you want to create true love, you want to create more money, whatever it is that you want, life will um, be roller coastery, <laughs> like because people don't buy stuff or things fail or um, you know, I don't know, things don't work out how you expect, and you can attach so much meaning on that that makes you feel like shit. <clears throat> and creates that emotional roller coaster. Or you can see it through the lens of love, joy, gratitude. Oh, this is just the lesson. Like, oh my God, I did amazing. I got this from this. Oh, wow, go me. And when you're treating yourself like that and you're congratulating yourself and you're praising yourself and you've got pr- pride and you've got like love for yourself in that way of all the big moves that you're making you're going to last a lot longer and it's going to you're going to be able to create the impact that you want and that's going to be a lot harder if you are being self abusive if you are constantly unconsciously repeating that emotional roller coaster 
you get to stop that. You get to change that. And how freaking amazing is that? So I have given you lots of info here. If you need more support in this area, come and join Heal Your Inner Child program. There's lessons and exercises and a community to support you. Uh, We actually have our call next, like the day after you listen to this podcast. And so come join us, you know, and be part of that special place where we are, we're stepping into our power. We are no longer just letting pain run the freaking show. Like we are taking our lives, you know, by the hands, getting in the driving seat of it and not allowing, allowing our unconscious mind and these patterns that get created to keep us stuck, right? And keep us repeating the old self, the old wounded self, the old traumatized self. Because when we carry on that, we have the same life. When we start to change things, like the way we speak to ourselves, the way we behave, the way we act, we get to create a whole different reality. And it's a completely different thing, right? So love you guys. Thanks so much for listening. This is carried on way longer than I thought, but there was just so much to share. And this podcast goes really well with my podcast on like changing your perspective. Like it sort of really links there. And even what I shared last week about the masculine and the feminine energy about, you know, when we're out of alignment in that way, and that can create that emotional roller coaster because we're having an imbalance of those energies in our lives and then we're not massively happy. And the craziest thing, right, is in our society, in our culture, in our families, everybody is looking outside of themselves for happiness. Everybody's looking outside of themselves for peace or for, if I get this one thing, then this is going to change. But that's just not true. Like build it within, with the way that you speak to yourself, the way you treat yourself. And meditation, visualizing your future you, acting as if you are future you right now that is not the traumatized self but is the empowered self that is life-changing work and honestly if you're listening to me then you are hearing the results of me doing this work for the last nine years you know I could not be in a healthy relationship I could not find love I could not go on a good date I couldn't save money I couldn't I hated my job you know I the abuser in my mind was telling me to kill myself. Like it was so bad. The pain was so bad, but I just couldn't carry on that way anymore. I couldn't carry on numbing and pretending it was not there and hurting myself in that way. But I didn't know what self-love was. I didn't know what peace was. I didn't know what safety was. I didn't know what freedom was. And it's through healing all the different layers of my past that's helping me more and more to come into this state of regulation, of empowerment. And from that energy, I get to create a life that that version of me that was in that traumatized environment, even 26, when I lost my dad or in my 30s, when I was struggling with all of this, she wouldn't believe the life that she has right now. So I like to bring her here here in my imagination quite a lot. And you guys can have that too. You guys can have anything that you want through loving yourself, from coming back home to yourself, from stopping the war with yourself, from putting that emotional roller coaster that you grew up in in the past. Because how many people in the world are looking for that outside validation? Like the richest people in the world, that celebrities that kill themselves, that hurt themselves, that have addiction issues because that success doesn't take away from what they feel. And that true happiness really does come from within, as cheesy as it does sound. And you are so worthy of that. And you are the controller of that. Step out of that victim consciousness and get into that driving seat. Notice, become curious of those patterns, of those voices, of the way that you're showing up in your life. And by changing your relationship with yourself, you will change the relationship with your body, with the world, with money, with whatever it is that you desire. Okay, next week's podcast is going to be all about manifestation and receiving, and we're going to kind of expand upon this. So I hope you enjoyed today's podcast, and I'll speak to you very, very soon. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, tell your friends about the podcast, and leave a review. Good or bad, I want to hear what you think, and make sure you follow us on Instagram, hearts underscore underscore happiness, and I will see you in the next episode.